I'm gonna watch a movie, movie, a TV show, or music because that's how it is. Welcome back, guys. So yeah, today I'm giving you some recommendations because I think two or three weeks ago I was talking about how you need to expose yourself to more Danish, and then someone wrote in the comment section, "Well, what should I watch or what should I listen to?" And that's a good point, and I have thought of it before. So today I'm gonna give you some suggestions for things you can watch and listen to. And of course, there are many, many more things than what I'm bringing up in this video. But this is something to get you started, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. And a little introduction here: if you're new, DanishMastery.com, right? That's the place, the website. The portal to learning. Yeah, you can say that. All right. So let's see what we got here. So we're starting with movies, okay? And I didn't write the translation because <laughs> it would be really weird in some cases. So uh, here we have a lot of movies, and most of these, pretty much all of these, are pretty messed up. They really reflect. Danish humor and something about our culture that we have a tolerance, a room for this weirdness and quirky characters. So, Kina Spisari Hune, that's a very unusual movie. <laughs> a lot of violence, but in a kind of funny way, if you can think that's funny. Very, very messed up. And the title has nothing to do uh, with the story, the plot. Gamle Mini Nu Bila. It's kind of related to that. It's also kind of messed up, just a random title, but it's funny, kind of raw. The Grønne Slagter. I'm just saying a little bit about each movie, and some I might elaborate more on than others, but just to get an idea of what they actually are. The Grønne Slagter is uh, is interesting. It also has a premise that's a little bit disturbing, but kind of interesting. Blinkende Lukter is kind of funny, but it's also a little more serious because it does have some real themes about being an adult and being in charge of your own life and so on. And it's very good. I don't want to say too much. It's, I would say, it was one of the movies when it came out in the year of 2000. It really started something. It really changed something in Danish movies. So if you can find that, that would be very good. And and you can find this. Online, even the unofficial way, I'm not supposed to say it, but you can. Then there's uh, Adam Zebla. Um, I don't know if I want to say so much about it. It's interesting. There's some different themes that you wouldn't maybe expect to see together. So I w I would check it out. Store plane. It's a little more normal, a little more down to earth, but of course not completely because store means big, so big plans. It uh, it's worth a watch, I would say. Store planer. Yeah, you you can check that out. Sprengfarli bombe. This one now, of course, we're all biased here. We all have opinions and stuff. But I find this movie hilarious. Sprengfarli bombe. It is, it is crazy. Uh, but it's it's very well made. Like the jokes are really on point, and you you can have a lot of fun with the with this movie. So highly recommended. Sprengfarli bombe. Lilsa Ugan, uh, it's the kind of funny but with a more serious vibe. It's it's yeah again I don't want to spoil too much, but it it has some good stuff in it and it makes you think at the same time. So give it a shot. Fidibus, <laughs> it's kind of light. Uh, one of the the actors, he's not even a real actor. I mean he's a rapper. I'm gonna get to him later. Yeah, but uh, it's it's interesting. It's it's. Um, if you're not used to Danish movies, it might be kind of offensive, but um, but yeah, it's definitely fun. And Sword Cooler is very funny, but also pretty dark. There are some supernatural themes here in Sword Cooler. Uh, it's with Anas Madison. He's a comedian. I'm also gonna mention him later again. But uh, very very interesting. From yeah, it's this movie is from 2008. So I can also say that many of these movies, they're not like so new, but they're not so old. They're basically from the first decade of this millennium, like from the 2000s. Uh, well, this one is from 99. And that's just because I grew up with these, so these came to mind. There are many, many more movies, but these are quite famous. 
these are few, there's more. In this category, uh, it's a little more of a love story, like Den Eneste Ene, that's a, that's a classic. Definitely, yeah, I don't know what's going on out there. Den Eneste Ene, yeah, I haven't personally watched it, or maybe it's a long time ago, but it's um, it, it's a sweet story. Elsker der for evigt. I mean, just r look at the title. It's definitely something you want to check out. In Court in Lang. That is an interesting story. Something you wouldn't expect. It, what you wouldn't expect it in 2002 at least. I think that's when it came out. It, it has some interesting themes. Uh, something about relationship dynamics and fidelity or infidelity and stuff like that. It's uh, It's really interesting how it's put together. It's a Jansk for beginner. I haven't seen myself, but uh, everybody says it's pretty good. And uh, it's just kind of like a, like a nice movie. That's what people say about it. It's like very cozy and comforting. It's a Jansk for beginner. Kærlighed ved første hik. Yeah, I remember this. This is a classic. This is really a classic. Uh, I have to translate it because it's so funny. It means love at first hiccup. And hik is hiccup. So you know, uh, first blick is first sight, and like love at first sight. So it's like a like a play on words. And that's kind of cool. It's from '99. It also has like two or three sequels. I'm not sure. They they are less good, I would say. But the first one is pretty solid. You know, it's about being young and exploring. You know, everything with uh, with men or women. It's. Uh, yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's classic and sweet and very simple. It's it's also based on a book. So I, ca I can definitely recommend that. Kjell hit the first hick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so have we Mifune sister song also supposed to be pretty good. Has like a like a nice vibe to it. It's from the late nineties as well. Mifune sister song. Yeah, so do check it out. Idiotane. That's kind of <laughs> offensive, right? That title, Idiotene. Well, it's from mid or late 90s, and it's one of these like dogma or dogma where there are certain rules in the filmmaking, so it looks a little more primitive, maybe. Something with you can't have uh, artificial lightning, and, and there are some other rules. I can't remember what those rules are. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Idiot under there. There's some scenes that really stand out, <laughs> so can check it out. Alle for en. Well, there's both alle for en, alle for two, alle for three. I think there's a fourth one coming out soon. Maybe they should really stop. But but anyway, they're kind of funny. You know, it's like a like a buddy comedy. It's three guys doing some stupid things. Of course, they have a plan, and then you know it kind of goes sideways as it's supposed to. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. Alle for en. Now some of these you might be able to find on Netflix or maybe not, but then there are other places. I'll I'll put something in the description in the video description afterwards, where you can really check it out. Yeah. Blue uh, men. That's also interesting. Uh, as far as I know, it was the director's first movie, so it feels very fresh in a way. It's from two thousand eight or two thousand nine. Yeah. There's some surprising things in it, and it's a comedy. Um, I would say most people can enjoy it. It's simple but interesting. Blue men. Now these movies are a little more serious. What well, most of them are, anyway, you could say. Festen. That is that is a classic from the late '90s. I think it's '97. It's it's a really good movie. I think it's uh, Thomas Winterberg. Uh, who directed it? So I don't want to say too much, but it is not just a party. And fest means party, but it's a party that you don't want to be at. It's really interesting, very nice filmmaking. Then there's uh, Druck, as also Thomas Winterberg. Maybe you know Druck because it's only when is it from? Ah, it's from 2020. It's, it came out in October 2020. Yeah. It, it's an interesting movie that examines drinking culture in Denmark. As you know, we like to drink a lot, especially when we're young. And that movie sort of explores this idea of drinking. Um, I don't want to say too much, but there are some exper experiments happening. It's definitely something to, to check out for, for a few laughs, but also for 
bit of reflecting and, and just to understand Danish culture a little better. Then there's Jagden. Now that is a dark movie. Uh, not scary dark, but just kind of dark side of humanity. Um, it is it is kind of a gut punch, but uh, it's very well made. You know, it's it's simple. The premise is very simple, but it's about people and feelings and situations. There's no f- no fluff here. It's very you know to the bone, um, but but it's good. Like it's well made. It's not a feel good movie, but it is well made. That's for sure. Kong Kabale, yeah, Kong Kabale. Uh, it's also pretty good. It's like political drama. Well, the journalist. Uh, investigating something political it's quite nice if you really have the patience to sit down you know and follow the plot and everything if you're into the more brainy cerebral stuff Kong Ikebele is quite nice so Nerevakten I haven't seen that myself but everybody says it's a classic it's from 94 it's a Guza it's a horror movie mine. so I don't watch horror because I'm scared <laughs> I'll admit it but if you're into horror, you can give it a shot. Nette Wagten. It's a real classic. Benken. Supposedly also a very good movie. I think it's from 2000, maybe 2001. Yeah, it it's basically about someone homeless. And uh, it's it treats it very well. It's it's a very interesting movie. It got very good reviews when it when it came out. Then we have In Kongeli Affair. Wow, that is good. That is very good. So, In Kongeli Affair is, of course, a royal affair. And uh, when is it from? 2014, 15? Not sure. But it's about something that did happen in real life. Uh, so, it's based on a true story. I mean, it's dramatized, of course, for effect. But but it's pretty interesting about one of our kings, Christian the Seventh. We have so many Christians. One of the Christians, yeah, who was kind of mentally unfit, and then you know, a lot of things happen. You can check it out. Maybe it'll also make you curious about Danish history, Kongli affair. Now I put one here that is old, but that's because it's such a classic, and I have a soft spot for it, and that is Olsen Benton. Olsen Benton is not just one movie, it's a series. It lasted from, I think it was 68 to 81, and then there was like a break, and they made one in 98. Uh, but the first, I think, 13 movies, they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, it's basically three guys, you know, they're, they're criminals, but, you know, the quirky kind, and they only steal from the rich people, the corrupt people, so you can't really hate them. It's... Again, it's kind of old. It's from the 70s mainly. So the language might be a little bit outdated. But it it has something about our culture. So there's certainly some value. And nonetheless, you'll understand some references that some Danish people might make. Especially older Danish people. Olsen Benden. Because Benden means the gang. (laughs) So, yeah, check it out. All right. And then we moved, so, yes, yeah, so, uh, this one, not so many. Guys, give me a second. All right, not so many here, eh, because it's uh, children's movies. Uh, of course, there are many more, but I t- generally stay away from cartoons, the traditional cartoons, anyway. So, here we have uh, Far to Fear. Now, Far to Fear, the original series was in the 50s and 60s, mainly 50s. Basically, a father of four, so there's a lot of kids, and then they go on all these adventures. And it's pretty nice, but I think you should probably watch the new one if you want to focus on learning Danish, which is why you're here. So the new one, the remakes, and I think these died around 2005 until up until today, pretty much. There's maybe like four or five of those uh, remakes. So, uh, yeah, it's good. It's, like, family-friendly and very wholesome. And, <laughs> and check it out. Uh, the same thing kind of goes for Min Sister's Burn. It's it's similar. Like, my sister's kids. Uh, just going on little adventures. Very kid-friendly. Simple. Not too complicated. You, you, you can try it. Again, there's the old one. And then there's the remake. Remakes. Eh? 
lot of those. It's a Klatratösen. Klatratösen. I saw this when I was 11. Oh, it's been a while. Yeah. That was uh, that was an interesting movie. I mean, it's mostly for kids, teenagers maybe. Um, again, something with some teenagers, they have to pull up, pull off a little uh, crime. But again, uh, the way it's put up makes it seem like it's justified and, and okay. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. Again, it's for kids, so it's not like a deep deep movie. But uh, yeah, you might be able to enjoy it. In Miracle. It came out around the same time, early 2000s. Uh, yeah, it, it has an interesting premise where uh, the boy in the movie, he's like 12, I think. And this angel, essentially, guardian angel, he gives him uh, the power to do anything. But if he swears, if he says any swear word, then he loses that power. So, of course, that's hard for a young boy. And then there's some other things too, but it's it's kind of interesting. Miracle, miracle. Yeah. Let's see. Then there's a Terkel Kniebe. Terkel Kniebe is is actually a well, it's not a cartoon, but it's a 3D animation. So I guess you can say it's a cartoon. It's from 2003, four, one of those years. And it's a comedy by Anas Madison, who's also in Sword Cooler. He's a stand-up comedian. He's very very famous if you're into Danish comedy. It's very important for the past 20-25 years so yeah Terkel Kniebe it's, it's again pretty messed up the humor is it's not really for kids teenagers I guess yeah but not young kids don't be fooled by the fact <laughs> that it's animation it's kind of like showing South Park or Sausage Party to your 8 year old daughter or son like it's just a bad idea but it's interesting Terkel Kniebe Ternal Ninja It or Ternal Ninja To let's just take them together uh, they're also they're similar to this because it's the same guy. I haven't seen. Okay, so now we're getting to TV shows. When I was making this list, you know, I had to select some and then not select some others. And basically, everything here is fiction. So, you know, uh, cooking shows, reality shows, um, documentaries, that type of stuff. Quizzes. It's it's not really here. I mean, I could put it. But I put fiction, so there's like a narrative and there's characters, you know, that uh, you can follow. So Reiseholle, uh, that was a big success. Uh, it actually won an Emmy, yeah, for best uh, international drama or something like that. It's from 2000, 2001. It's pretty good. It's not my thing. But if you're into like crime stuff, you know, it's basically a bit old fashioned from the early 2000s. This is, this is solid. It's very solid. Then there is uh, Taxa. Yeah, Taxa is uh, is also pretty cool. It came before. It was a nice face they had. Dr. or Dr. Uh, yeah. It's about a yeah a taxi company or whatever you call it, a bureau, and that's that's really it. You follow their lives and blah 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 and that kind of stuff. It's nice. Of course, it feels dated. Some of the jokes and stereotypes and stuff they say. But the language is still, I mean, it's still like today. It hasn't been that long. For Brudelsen, I didn't watch it, but that's just because it's not my thing. Many people love it. Eh? The crime or the killing. I think we translate it to the killing, even though for Brudelsen means crime, like felony. Uh, it's very popular. You know, the main character is a woman. I think it's, uh, it's Sophie Kroppel, who is, I think, yeah, she's the one playing it. It's It's very popular. So if you're into again crime stuff, like many Danish people are, you can check it out. Forbrydelsen. Either Coppen, I haven't watched it, and not so many people talk about it, but it seems like an okay show. Either Coppen, it means the spider. I think it's more sort of in the mystery, like crime, but more mystery. And again, you can go to DRDK and check it out. And uh, Lüge, yeah. That is, uh, <laughs> that's cool. I think there's only two seasons, but it's fine. It's like this big company it's happening at, and you know, there's these different people. Um, I can't really say so much about it because the premise is nothing special, but it's a decent show, bit of drama, bit of comedy. Yeah. 
uh, when I write DI here later on, it'll be TV2 or TV2 because that's the place you can watch it, whether it's a streaming app or on TV. Is because DR is free, as you know, because you pay your media tax. So anyone can watch that. You can just do it on your computer. But TV2 or TV2, you need to pay. I mean, if you have it on TV, then that's the same. Um, so just, just know that. But DR is there for everyone to watch. And we have Kroenigen. Uh, it's also supposed to be pretty good. I think they try to make something like Metador, and which we'll get to in a second. Kroenigen is generally considered to be pretty good. It's around 2004, 5, maybe 6, yeah. That's when it came out, Kroenigen. So it's, it's back in the mm, 50s. Yeah, I believe it starts back in the 50s and then maybe ends sometime in the 70s. There's like some time jumps. So again, a bit of history and get a bit of Danish history. And it's not even that long ago. Kroenigen. So more history, 1864. Yeah, so that's about a war. I believe it was with the Germans. That would make sense anyway. There's a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can check that out. 1864. From what I heard, it's not so accurate. Like, it's not so historically accurate. But if you can forgive that and, and not care about that, then I guess you'll be okay. At least for learning Danish and, you know, to have a little entertainment. You're good. Adden Fiatres. Oh, I jumped a bit there. Metador. Metador is the classic. And, like, that is the one you've all heard of. It's considered to be the best Danish TV show ever, like by most standards. Because it's well written, you know, you got a good writer, a good director, good actors, good music. It's just everything came to together and from like 79 to 81. That's roughly when it came out, when it was airing. There's 24 episodes, so that's perfect for Christmas. And you can watch one episode a day until the 24th. Or just watch it any other time. So Matador is Matador is definitely a classic, and and yeah, it's about the time right before World War Two. I guess it's the early thirties maybe, and then right after World War Two. And so yeah, it's it's a good show. It's a lot of good actors and good music. It's slow because it's old. I mean, it's over forty years old, but um, yeah, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Hans Weyer. I haven't watched it mainly because I'm usually not in Denmark and nobody talks about it. So, uh, Hans Weyer, it's it's something with more religious, dare I say, overtones. It's about a, a church or something. It looks okay, you know. It's kind of heavy and kind of serious. But uh, one of the actors, uh, what was it, um, Lars Mikkelsen, he's like one of the main characters. He said that he actually became more religious after playing that role, like Christian. Uh, so it must be very powerful. Right? So you can give it a shot if you want. It's not the typical Danish TV show, but it might be worth it. Then you got Born. Born or Bowen. Uh, it's also on Netflix. You might have seen it there. Could be a little bit heavy because uh, <laughs> I mean, it's about politics, but it's not that complicated it's not so procedural it's more you know their daily lives and and the struggle for power and and so on it's it's pretty good i haven't watched the latest season like there are four seasons the first two are really good the third one is also pretty solid so born check it out it's advanced though i mean the way they talk it's some of the the lingo it's mm, it's not exactly basic but you can give it a shot then we got, uh, yeah, so here we are in TV2, eh? In TV2 there's like uh, Strisa på Samsø. That's, that's another one. Samsø, that's an island. Eh? Ooh, island. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's also from the late 90s. And again, it's more of this drama eh? with the police and yada yada. So is Hvide Sande. Videsan is also like that, but it's much newer. Like, I think there's still new episodes of Videsan coming out. It's very popular because for some people, sorry, for some reason, Scandinavian people just love these uh, crime shows. I don't. I think it's depressing as hell. But, you know, some people are into it. Uh, this one we're going to skip because I made a little mistake here. There's actually a movie. <laughs> there's a show called Lergevei. So let's forget this one for now. 
forsvar looks pretty okay you know so forsvar means defense and yeah it's about some defense lawyers so there's again some crime but from a different perspective some good actors as always and what you'll notice is that if you watch Danish movies and TV shows, there's a lot of overlapping with, with the actors because we don't have so many. I mean, you, you can't really watch two movies, definitely can't watch three, without at least one of the actors overlapping. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. A lot of familiar faces. Badehotel. Badehotel is great, and there's a lot of seasons. Again, history it takes place from, let's see, 28 in 1928 to some time after World War Two, and of course there's some jumps during the war. It's a, it's a very nice show, good actors, very good production value. Each episode is about 40 minutes, there's only like 6 episodes per season, but there's 9 seasons, the 10th is coming out in a month, I think the final season is coming out in January. So Bell Hotel, I think it takes place at well, Bell Hotel, a hotel right by the beach, in Tobeth, bathing hotel. <laughs> Yeah, beat hotel. So it's really cool. It's good. Yeah, the language is a bit outdated. Well, it's not outdated in that sense, but of course they use expressions that are old. Like we we're more formal. We we're more polite back then. Yeah, but it's a new show. It started in 2014 and it's still running. Very nice. Rita. Yeah, so Rita is good. You might have seen it on Netflix because it's there. I think no matter where in the world you are, Rita is there. So maybe you already watched it, but you can rewatch it or you can watch it for the first time. It's a pretty good show. I didn't realize it existed before 2018 and it started in 2013. So I was like, oh yeah, many seasons. Yeah, it's it's nice, you know. The good thing about Rita is that it's very realistic. It's very um, like down to earth. The stuff they talk about, the things that happen, it's it's like, wow, I actually had that experience. I know someone who had that experience. It's not artificial, it's not like, I mean, many of these shows are good, but the way they talk is a little bit too dramatized or too self-serious or too whatever ridiculous. But Rita is like very down to earth and there's drama and, and comedy and yeah, everything. It's, it's a really good show, Rita. I would definitely say that. Uh, there's also some comedy, like pure comedy. You got Lang for Las Vegas. And again, I have a soft spot here. I like Las Vegas is nice. It's a, it's a sitcom. We don't have so many sitcoms in Denmark, <laughs> sadly. But uh, yeah, it is one. And uh, personally, I think it's funny. Some people don't. The humor is a bit juvenile and corny and lowbrow, whatever it's called sometimes. But uh, y you can try it. It ran from 2001 to 2003. Maybe even better than Lang for Las Vegas is Clown. Clown simply means clown. And it's a lot of the same people working on this. Clone is good because the way it it's acted is in every scene they don't have all the lines. They just have a, what do you like an end goal in the scene, how it has to end. But the lines themselves, they just improvise, which means that it's very, very natural Danish. It's not artificial. It's pretty much how we talk in real life. So yeah, clone is very good for learning Danish, I would say. The next one, shit happens. Yeah, that is correct. That's what we call it. And I guess they spelled it with a J to get out of censorship, even though we don't really have censorship in Denmark. So yeah, this show, uh, it's not really my thing, but some people find it funny. You know, it's kind of not sitcom in traditional sense, but yeah, it is funny. It's kind of cute and entertaining. Danish Dynamite. This is a sketch show, sort of. It's like you follow different characters like, in their lives, and they're all kind of weird and pathetic and of course none of them are normal and they take themselves too seriously a Danish dynamite it's a uh, it's something you can enjoy I think it ran from 2013 to 16 something like that so who knows maybe it'll be your thing and there's trying to find Goa uh, it was very popular when it ran 2003 4 5 around those years uh, it's also three guys it's also a sketch show you know they just act there's a bike team called Team Easy on, and you can Google that, and you'll you might have a laugh, and and just some other characters. It's it's interesting. It's a bit dated maybe nowadays, but uh, yeah, I I think it still has some quality. It, it's solid. Tom Gang, Tom Gang is nice because it's pretty laid back. 
It's just about three guys who are, well, kind of losers, to be honest. And, you know, they don't know a whole lot about life or women or finances. They just kind of suck. But they're not bad people. They're just kind of living at a lower level or what you want to call it. A lot of mediocrity, I would say. But it's funny um, because of the way they talk, like the banter they have or Tom guy. And it's not too over the top. It's not like crazy, crazy. It's just like... Ah, uh, you're kind of wrong, dude. That's that's not how it is, but okay. And so you kind of go with it and have some fun. Then, uh, ah, yeah, Christmas stuff. Yeah, so here we basically have the Christmas stuff. in Julekalender. Jul på slottet. I think that's the oldest one here. It's from 86. I felt like I had to include it because it's such a beautiful title and some people really love it. Uh, so that's one. Nissebanden i Grønland. I hope we say i Grønland, because in the old days we said på Grønland. But, you know, they're independent, even though they're in a kingdom, so you're supposed to say i Grønland. That's for another day. I talk about that. Uh, but it's a classic, Nissebanden, the, the elf gang. Nisse. <laughs> it's cute, and there's some nice songs. It's very, very wholesome and warm. Yeah, feeling very nostalgic now. Bamses Julereise, also quite a bit of nostalgia, I have to admit. It's from 96, around that time, I think. Bamse is a teddy bear, like, you know, he's a man in a costume. And he's kind of dumb. Now, I was a bit hesitant because he kind of speaks incorrectly on purpose, and I don't want you to do that. But as long as you also watch other things, it's fine. And it's a cute story. And it's, yeah, because it's made for little kids, in like five, six-year-olds. Kroman is Jul. I watched some of this when I was around 11. It's enjoyable. They also have regular movies, Kromane. Uh There's something with some elves. And just all the typical Christmas stuff. So you can you can definitely watch that. Maybe it'll be your thing. Altid is Jul. Now this one is actually showing this year. Ain't like it's a rerun because the original is from 94. I love Alle Tiders Jul, and it's two, uh, three sequels on the next slide. It's basically taking place in the royal archives where the elves, they travel inside the books to learn about like, history of Christmas or history of Denmark or fairy tales and elves. It's it's very interesting. You learn a little bit of our history again. I don't take it as proper education, right, because it's dramatized. But it, it might make you curious. Alle Tiders Jul is very enjoyable uh, it's old it's from 94 but try it it's showing this year on tv2 play and you can watch it one new episode episode every day otherwise just buy the dvds they're not so expensive nowadays else is nisse that's a sequel don't need to get into too many details jule manning that's santa claus else is eventure so 24 episodes in each a very solid stuff and the music is pretty good most of them yeah, so who knows? You might love it. Brother and Morten's Jule. That's also sweet. Wholesome. Yeah, it's also TV2. Uh, late 90s, I think. It's good stuff. And uh, has some has some nice music, a lot of snow, and yada yada. Yeah, just solid Christmas show. Jule Valhall came a bit later. It's 2005. So I was a bit too old for it when it came. But again, Valhall. It's, uh, you know, so we have all that Nordic mythology. We got Thor, Odin, Loke, Freya, Hel, Balder, and so on. So there's a little bit of mythology. Again, it's simplified. It's sometimes incorrect. But it's interesting. The kids are not good actors. But you don't really care, right? The two kids that are running around talking to the gods. Yeah. Juli Valhall. And some okay music. Oh, there's a little spelling mistake. It's supposed to say Vesterbro. Okay, so you put Vesterbro. Is um is also a Christmas one, but it's for adults. So this is again Anna's Madison, right? who made those other things. Uh, he's very talented, and in this one he plays all the characters. He's uh, <laughs> he's the father, the son, the social worker. Um, who else is? And and another. He's so many characters. It's it's very politically incorrect and it's offensive to some people, but it's it's fun and there are some decent songs as well. Each e- episode is only five, no, ten minutes. Yeah, two thousand three. That that was a good year. That's when it came out. So yeah, a lot of good stuff. 
All right, so originally today I wanted to also go through music, but now I'm looking and I see it's already been 35 minutes. So I'm going to split that up. I'm going to do that in another video. Then I'll talk about music. And who knows, maybe I'll also include something else in that. But for, but for now, today, we're just sticking to this. Movies and TV shows. Of course, it would have been awesome if I could have showed you clips, scenes, and so on. But, you know, copyright is a thing. I'm not above it. So this is how it has to be. You can do a Google search and find all these. Some of them might be on Netflix. We might have to go to some other place. I admit that it's not the easiest thing in the world to find Danish movies and streaming services because, well, Denmark is small. Why would anyone who's not Danish want to watch these? Unless you live in Denmark. There's not a lot of people. So that can be hard. But sometimes, you know, you can get maybe get a collection secondhand and then blow a vis, DBA, secondhand stuff. Uh, and there are some streaming services where there are some Danish movies. I'll look it up. And then I'll put something in the description. Because of course you should have a fair chance. You should be able to watch this. Because it's a very good way to learn Danish. Watching these shows. The thing is, educational videos like mine and, and others, they're, they're good. I mean, we do what we can. But it's never going to be truly entertaining. Because we have to speak clearly. And there's a certain element of repetition. It's just, it's not the same. And you're not going to care about it the same way. As you will when it's entertainment. Like, and there are characters and stories, plot unfolding. That is what you really want to get into. Some of these, I mean, on DR, so they only have uh, Danish subtitles. Maybe that's too advanced for you. But even if it is, you can still put it on and you will get used to hearing it. Again, you'll see the spelling and just the flow of conversation, how people talk. So you might only understand 10% but it still adds to your learning so don't be afraid of that some people will say why are there no english subtitles and it's like because it's for danish people i mean it's not for learning danish it would be cool if you had english subtitles but you don't so yeah it just is what it is all right cool so yeah keeping it a bit short today and then i'll do music next time yeah let me take a look in the in the live chat we got city noridaya saying miss your voice Okay, that's nice. <laughs> Ulgo, will you upload stream on YouTube when it ends? Yeah, so for most live streams, I just leave them as is. Like after the stream ends, I just leave it and you can watch it. I think it's being processed by YouTube. It'll be a HD definition. HD definition. HD version later. Yeah. Um, but there are some times when I, when I take it down and then I upload a short version but in that case, you can still get the full version on the website, danishmastery.com. So it doesn't disappear anything. You just have to pay for it, essentially. All right. Uh, Tongsang or Tongsang Busa Park saying hi. Mm, hi. Andreas Bøtker saying, I think Olsen is a world-kind. Oh, that would be nice. It would be nice if they were world-kind, if they are famous in the whole world. God damn, I love it. Yeah, I love Olsen Banden. I mean, I could do a whole rant about that, but we should uh, should keep focus here. It's good stuff. Uh, Riz Alex, or Riz Alex saying, especially at this time of year, watching Yule Kalender gives me a Danish Christmas atmosphere. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the thing, you know. Like now that I'm here in Southeast Asia, specifically Indonesia, right now, I'm I'm like missing, you know, the Christmas spirit. Where's the snow? Where's the music? It's a bit of my right carry and all that last Christmas with Wham, but come on, like, nah, you gotta have the, the Danish Christmas, right? So yeah, I, I feel you, it's definitely true. And once again, we got Tung Sain or Tung Sek Busa Park, a lot of hearts and a nice little emoji. All right, that's cool. So yeah, guys, that's it for today, right? Look these shows up, and right? We watch this video, you know what, maybe I should just compile a list, I can just put them in the description, right? then you can see them all. And uh, yeah, let me know how it goes. Because, like I said, educational videos are good. But if you really want to learn a lot, you got you to gotta watch something that... Um, you got to watch our pop culture, right? And consume it. That's the way. Is there anything else? Well, just a quick reminder. Right? As always, the website, danishmastery.com. That's the place. And uh, yeah, how long it's been? I know how long it's been. But it's hard to believe sometimes. Ten years. It's a long time. Yeah, but it's cool, you know. I think it's nice that there's a lot of different videos 
there's the grammar videos, and then there's the short stories, then maybe there's a song or a rap, and there's a conversation between me and myself, or me and someone else. It's uh, it's a lot of stuff in there, so so it's pretty cool. And the bonuses, and some more bonuses coming up soon, depending if you're gold or diamond. And there are different packages you can get in there, depending how how much you want it, essentially. So yeah, that is the place, and YouTube is sort of the the beginning, what you are watching right now is the introduction and then the full experience is on danishmastery.com. That's basically how it is. Alright, I think that's it for today. Yeah, so uh, yeah, soon I can say Glædelig jul, Merry Christmas in a few weeks. But uh, for now I'm just gonna chill and say see you soon guys.